Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the final part in the Lion real-time tutorial series. So if you guys aren't aware, I have posted two other parts of this tutorial here on my channel. They are both in real time and you can go back to the first and the second part and you can start the Lion from the very beginning. So if you haven't followed this tutorial yet then I recommend you go and do that first but if you have followed both of those parts and you're ready to finally complete your entire lion drawing then carry on watching and we're gonna jump straight into the tutorial. Okay so we're gonna come around this side of the faces we're gonna take our base layer we're gonna use some of the warm grey going to use the warm grey one. All we're going to do is just lightly shade, just coming off the side of the face here. I'm just going to come slightly down. So most of the graphite here is slightly lifted, so that's good. It's not going to shine through. So I'm just going to bring some warm grey one just slightly off the side of the face here where it sort of blends into the mane. And you've got this sort of lighter tuft here. So then the warm grey kind of comes into a bit more of like a cream. So I'm going to use some cream uh, from the Pablo, but you can use some ivory from the Polychromos. And just note the direction that the fur is going and then shade down in that direction. So just coming to the edge of the face here first. So just going to concentrate on this small section just here. So I'm just going to blend through some of the warm grey one into the existing area just to help to blend everything. Then what we're going to do is just take some of the burnt ochre and the raw umber. So I'm going to give both of these pencils a quick sharpen so we've got nice sharp points to work with. Also going to work with some of the nougat at this stage as well, which also just needs a quick sharpen. Okay, so we're going to take the raw umber first. We're going to work some of this sort of raw umber shade from the face here and just bring down some really soft and gentle fur lines through to this area that we've just shaded. Just bringing down some really, really gentle fur lines, just going in the direction of the fur. And as we come into this lighter section that we've just shaded down, we're going to just make sure that we kind of lift the pressure off the tip of the pencil so the fur strokes really nicely taper out. And just down by the muzzle here where it's a little bit more orange, just going to just gently shade some of the raw umber down there. So just gently adding down some of the raw umber tone. Just coming underneath this really light section. So right sort of underneath the eye here we've got this really light section which kind of pokes out a little bit. And we're just going to shade some of the raw umber around that. Kind of like what we've done on this side. So we get this white sort of overhanging all of this sort of darker fur. I'm just going to switch to using some of the burnt ochre just so we get that sort of orange just coming through here as well just where we have slightly more orange tones in the fur
And I'm just going to take that nougat and we're going to start to work in some more of the sort of almost grey tones. So just make sure you've got a really nice sharp pencil to do this and just start adding some shadows and some fur lines through some of the darker areas. Just coming to around the top of the eye here. All of this fur comes into the mane, that's where we're going to concentrate now. Just bringing our fur strokes round, elongating them as we bring them round here so that we sort of really blend the face fur into the mane. We're also going to take some of the warm grey 3 and add that through here as well so we get a slightly sort of more grey grey tone, a bit more of a shadow going on. So I'm just going to take that warm grey 3. I'm just going to do exactly the same, just creating small fur lines just around where we have some more of those shadows. And then we're going to take some of the walnut brown and just get even darker. Just add a few fur lines through of this darker tone now. I'm going to take the burnt ochre and I'm just going to use this to just shade down some more shadow and some more sort of a bit more pigmented areas into the face just where the light's catching a little bit and I'm also going to use some of the light cadmium red to just highlight a few areas within there as well. I'm also just going to use a tiny little bit of the sky blue into a bit more of the cooler tone sort of shadowy areas as it comes into the main here. And just into some certain shadows just around the mouth and around some of the lighter sections as well just to really kind of highlight those lighter sections. I'm also just going to use the nougat just to bring a few fur strokes through the lighter sections just to break it up, give it a little bit of texture. Like so. So we need to just fill in this section here that sort of comes underneath this lighter patch. It's quite warm in tone. I'm going to add another layer of the cream from the Pablo, but if you're not using the cream from the Pablo, if you're using ivory from the Polychromos, go ahead and use that. But you need like a, a warmer toned base rather than just a grey base. I'm just going to take some of the raw umber and 
then just lightly do some shading. So I'm just coming into the bottom of the mouth here where we've just got a little bit more of like a orangey yellow shadow going on there just to define the very bottom edge of that. I'm just going to use the raw umber just really lightly shade just to get a really light creamy tone going on here and then I'm going to use some of the nougat to continue to add the shadow there and I'm going to work from this creamier tone into this lighter patch with the nougat and just add some fur lines just so that we get that broken edge. So you notice I've got a little bit of shadow under here and then you've got this lighter patch overhanging which is perfect. So what I'm going to do is just add some warm grey one and blend it into this area where we've just added some of the uh, warmer toned base. And just really bring it, bring it out into the fur now. So then directly on top of that I'm just going to go straight in with some of the nougat and just start to add some more shadows. I'm actually also going to add a little bit of the light flesh into here because it's a little bit more of like a pinky, a pinky brown. So I'm just going to add some light flesh in there. And go over with some of the nougat. Start to really elongate the fur strokes now. I'm also just going to come up around the side of the face and just add a little bit more of a harsher sort of shadow, just adding some shading just to define the sort of bone structure on the face there a little bit more. Use some of the light cadmium red just to highlight a few areas within the face. I'm just going to use some raw umber. To just add a little bit more shadow to this bit underneath this lighter section and again I'm also going to use some more of the sky blue again just adding it to the sort of shadowed areas underneath here and I'm also going to use some of the Caput Mortem Violet underneath here as well so we've got that sort of purpley pinky darker tone 
starting to develop under here. And I'm working from the darker section, so from the right to the left, and working in to sort of break up the edge of this little lighter fur patch. And we're also going to use the white pencil to just bring some fur strokes into the darker area. So it looks like it's overlapping. We can also use the scalpel here as well. I'm also just going to use the dark sepia just to add some final hints of the dark colour and the shadow off the side here. Like so. You can just work on developing some more of these shadows here as well to the side of the face. So we get that really nice bone structure coming through of the lion. So his face looks a lot more defined. You really want to kind of cinch him in sort of around the eyes. So from uh, sort of the nose area, so where you're level with the nose, that's where you kind of want to start to sort of bow out and then cinch back in up to a little bit of a point at the forehead so that you've got that really round cat-like feature of the face there. So you don't want to have your sort of roundness coming from down here. You want to bring it up so you get that really kind of, um, it's, it's so, so it sort of elongates the nose and the muzzle area. If you come down here it's going to shorten the muzzle area but if you make sure that your shading is sort of in line with the nose and sort of bows out and comes up and round to a point you should elongate the nose by doing that. So now we just need to work on the mane. That is the last sort of portion of this and originally I was just going to come straight to the edge of the paper over here but I think I'm just going to frame him just with this really golden mane just around here um, for the purpose of this tutorial. I just feel like that section just around there is going to be um, the best to add to this rather than all of the... Um, for all the way back here. So we're just going to start from this section up here and just bring it round Then the last section that we do is the bottom here. So coming back up to this section up here What we're going to do is use our cream or our ivory as the base And all we're going to do is just shade. So you're just going to come off from the face just coming in the direction of the mane. This is kind of flowing in this sort of direction so coming almost down to the bottom right hand corner so that's how we're going to be adding this. So you just want to really gently shade with your pencil to begin with. So your pencil doesn't really need to be sharp, it can be quite blunt however you feel comfortable shading. Some people do like to shade with quite a blunt pencil, you can see that mine's quite blunt here rather than a sharp pencil, but whatever feels comfortable to you. So you're just making sure that you follow the direction of the main. Just going to add a little bit more up here as well, just blend these two bits in. So I'm just going to come down to Roughly here. Just going to also just lift the graphite a little bit down here with the kneaded eraser.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is just build our fur from lighter to darker. So this fur is really light, all of it is just really kind of really catching the light here. So we're going to be using some light flesh, some of the dark Naples ochre, some of the dark chrome yellow. Obviously be using some of the um, burnt ochre and some of the light cadmium red as well. We'll be using a little bit of the white pencil to do some blending. And obviously we'll be using the scalpel to pull out a few highlights here and there. I'm going to start off with some light flesh. Now this isn't necessarily all over this piece. It's just where we have the sort of more apricoty tones showing through. So we're just going to use the pencil and just add some shading into some of those areas that we can see. So use your judgment on this. Just look where you can see some kind of apricot tones. And we're going to mix this with the yellow in a minute and we're going to add the yellow all over. And the yellow will turn this even more sort of apricot-y. So I'm just adding that down to there. I'm going to take the Dark Naples Ochre and we're just going to shade all over. So coming from the face, following the direction that we added with the base layer. And you can see that when this colour mixes with the light flesh, it, add, it gives it a really subtle, soft, peachy tone. So when we are using the yellow, when we are working in some of the ends, we're going to bring in some fur lines here. So we're just going to bring off the ends, some really light yellow. So when you are bringing fur lines off the ends, you want to keep your pencil really nice and light. And you want to work in some slightly different directions. So you want your fur strokes to sort of overlap just to give it kind of like that messy textured edge. So as we come down sort of underneath this bit, this bit is a bit more grey in colour. So we don't really want to add too much yellow to that, but towards the tips of those strands of fur, it does become a lot more yellow. So to the tips, we're going to add in the yellow and then we're just going to really softly lift the pressure off the pencil as we come back towards a sort of more grey tone. coming over and just darkening up a few areas where we have like a little bit more light showing through the mane. And then I'm going to switch to using some of the dark chrome yellow. So now we're just going to start to darken up some of the areas, just add a little bit more of like a yellow, um, an orange hue.
So really sort of coming into the shadows just around the face and shading. And then as we work towards the edges, we're just going to use some fur lines and bring that through and blend it. So lifting the pressure off the pencil as you come towards the end of the first stroke. I'm just going to work over a couple of times just to really kind of get a nice orange tone going on just around the side of the face. I'm going to take some of the burnt ochre now and get slightly darker around the edges of the face. So that's what we're going to work on now. You're just getting this kind of darker texture in here. So you just want to follow the direction of the fur. You want to use your burnt ochre and bring it from the face and into the mane. Just by elongating the strokes, just adding really nice soft tapered fur lines as well. going over multiple times so you get that nice saturation of that colour. I'm going to take some of the I'm um, sorry, the cadmium, the light cadmium red, and just drag some of that through some of the darker areas just at the side of the face here, so we get that really nice catching light once again. some of the burnt sienna to really add in some of the darker tones here so coming right from the face sweeping right the way down some of these fur sections here really darkening especially this uh, bottom section up where it's just slightly kinks out really kind of darkening that up use some of the Indian red as well you really get that sort of rich shadow really kind of ready brown tone going on and then using some of the Caput Morton Violet
blending some of the Kevin Morton Violet into the face here. So you can see that we obviously need to just make sure that we blend this all the way through. I'm going to take some of the burnt ochre and I'm just going to blend some of this through onto the face along with the raw umber. It's got a nice sort of yellow hue going on on the face just as it sort of comes into a bit more of the mane. I'm also going to use some of the nougat. Just shaping up some of the face here. some of the walnut brown just to darken up around the face a little bit more and just darken up as we come down the side of the face here So we just need to taper out this darker area into this lighter area a little bit more. So I'm going to use some of the raw umber for that. I'm just going to bring in some fur lines of the raw umber. Just concentrating a lot of them together sort of where the, the darker edge of the, this bit of the mane is. And then as we spread out into... The rest of the mane just getting a little bit looser and a little bit more sporadic with the lines. I'm also going to bring in some of the burnt ochre at this stage as well. Just adding in lines of both of those colours. We will also come through with some of the burnt sienna as well. We're just concentrating on our lighter colours to begin with. in a tiny little bit more of the light flesh just to bring back a little bit more of that sort of apricot tone especially towards the tips of the mane just at the top section here I'm going to use some of the burnt sienna to blend through some of these darker tones as well now at the top Just really kind of blending it out, making it almost seamless. I'm going to be adding in some of the um, sort of dragging out some of the lines with the scalpel in a second as well. I'm going to be using some of the walnut brown just to darken certain areas as well. So make some areas really dark. I'm 
And then I'm going to use the nougat just to bring through some strands of a bit more of a, like a neutral brownie tone through here just to add the sort of shadows in between some of these furs. Maybe just adding down a little bit more of the raw umber for a little bit more of a yellow tone. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shading of the raw umber through this last little section. And again, just going to use some of the light flesh just to add in a bit more of a peachy tone. Just add some strands coming off the ends of the fur. I'm going to use some of the burnt ochre. Blend this through. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and do the same. Just adding some darker fur strokes in here, and I'm also just going to. shadow between some of the strands as well so you're just keeping the first streaks really kind of rough just to mimic the texture and the feel of the mane so what I like to do when I do this kind of texture is just like to imagine sort of running my hands through it and kind of what it would feel like kind of would feel a little bit tangled a little bit knotted your fingers might get stuck in it a little bit so you just want to create sort of darker clumps through it where you've just got a sort of some areas sort of matting together a little bit more. And I'm just going to use a little bit of the nougat through some of those sort of darker areas that I just sort of shaded in. And then we're going to take some of the chrome, dark chrome yellow, and we're just going to layer this down. It's going to give this a really nice kick, really nice highlight. We're also going to use some of the dark Naples ochre as well. To so make it really nice and yellow, really nice and bright and vibrant, just really thoroughly shade some of this down so we get all of that light catching on the fur. Just coming through with some burnt sienna. And then just coming back in and shading for a little bit further down. Just into the, some of the darker areas as well. It's going to help to blend that out. Just add that really nice rich lighting. A lighting effect to this guy. And I'm just going to use some of the Indian red just to pull a few darker strands three. Just shading in a few more sort of red areas. extend some of the rich sort of red colours just at the top here just by shading down some of the light cadmium red. Also just going to layer some of the dark chrome yellow up there as well. Like so. So we're just going to take our scalpel so I've got my slice tool and I'm just going to pull out some little fine details through here. So I'm just going to use my scalpel like this and just pull out some details. A really fine lighter hair is just sitting over the top.
it's coming at slightly different angles as well so we get a lot of different texture developing so I'm just going to use my little dusting brush to get rid of any residues that are building up and I'm just going to work into this lighter section scrape away some colour there so it looks as though that white patch is sitting over the top of this darker area there we go just a little bit of texturing not too much there So then we've got all of this bottom edge to do down here. So we've just got this small section here as well to do, which is a lot darker, it's sort of this kind of tone, what is going on underneath uh, this really white tufty patch here. So in order to do that, we're just going to lightly shade down some of the raw umber. So the direction of this is still sort of the same. It's coming off towards the bottom right. Just a really light layer of this. You don't want to push hard at all. You just want a really soft, gentle layer of the raw umber. Just build it up a couple times. And then all we're going to do is just go straight in with some of the nougat. And we're just going to create some fur lines get really nice and dark underneath the chin here we're going to couple this with some uh, green I'm also going to use some walnut brown as well just to really kind of darken it a little bit further we will also add a few highlighted areas of like some dark chrome yellow but we're just going to add the majority of this down with some of the nougat to begin with Just going to add in some slightly darker areas with some of the walnut brown straight away. And again, I'm just using like my fur strokes, just tapering off at the edge, but I'm also just making sure that some of these fur strokes bend over one another because it just gives it a bit more of a natural look. Push a little bit harder just to get a little bit darker in one certain area. Blend it out by lifting the pressure. We can couple some of this with the sky blue to create a little bit more of a sort of cool toned shadow almost. Just coming all the way down.
just coupling that with some walnut brown, just some darker strokes. I'm also going to go in there with some of the dark sepia just to get a little bit darker in some of the shadows around here. Just really sort of accentuating some of the shadows and also just going to shade slightly into the section on the face a little bit. Just to bring that shadow and just to keep the stretch of the face there. Using some more of the sky blue. And then just switching to the walnut brown. Adding some of this in. Getting a little bit heavier with some of the lines and the pressure. And I'm also just going to shade down some burnt ochre and some of the raw umber I've got a little bit of a darker area through the main just here which I'm just going to sketch out really quickly with the raw umber Going to use the burnt sienna into that area. And we're going to use some of the Capricorn violet. Just adding in some really light strokes of the Caput Morton Violet through here and I'm also going to use some of the Terracotta for a little bit of a deeper, sort of more, almost neutral orange shade. I'm going to use some of the Walnut Brown to continue darkening right next to the jawline here and just bringing it through the rest of the mane. I'm also just going to use some of the dark chrome yellow just to bring out a little bit of lightness towards the tips. some of the dark sepia to darken up this stripe down the side of the mane here
And I'm also just going to run a little bit of the nougat over this lighter patch just to tone it down a little bit. Blend it in a bit more. Like that. So it doesn't need to stand out quite as much as it was. I'm going to use a bit more of the walnut brown just to partition some of that up as well. Going over with some of the sky blue, just shading it this time. Just to add that shadow in and just also adding a lot more of the sky blue just underneath the chin here. Again for that shadow, just really tone it down. Really sort of make it kind of almost like a grayscale effect. And I'm just going to shade it a little bit more of the raw umber as well. A bit more yellow before going in with some of the. I'm going to use some of the Caput Morton Violet just to add in a few more strands and a bit more definition between some of the fur here. Just kind of make it really kind of look almost tangled. darkening up this bit around here because I dropped a pencil here and it's just marked the paper a little bit and it's a bit obvious so I'm just gonna go in and just create a little bit of a darker edge on that bit there you don't need to do this with yours if you don't want to it's just so I can kind of blend out this darker spot some of the light cadmium red just to highlight some of those darker areas just add a little bit of light to the fur there and I'm also just going to use a little bit of the yellow again just to bring nice vibrant tone to the mane in some places some of the dark sepia some of the Indian red as well just to keep continue blending all of these darker colors out into these lighter colors can go ahead and add the patches underneath the chin here so we need to keep this chin really nice and white and to, the way I'm going to do that is just by laying down a few white pencil strokes so I could use the embossing tool but I'm actually just going to push really hard on the white pencil and just create an edge to this white beard And hopefully when we add our darker colours around it, we'll preserve that kind of really white area in the beard there. So for this last section, we're just going to lightly shade down some of the warm grey one. I'm just going to come from this side and just come round and join up to here. So this is all pretty much just going to be really nice and dark. We're going to be adding in these sorts of tones here. So all we're going to do is shade this down.
coming right down to the ends here. I've got some Scotch Magic Tape just on the bottom of my paper here just to create a nice edge. I'm going to come up to where we have the beard a little bit up here and hopefully those white lines that we put down with the white pencil will be visible, especially the more sort of darker tones that we have down here. I just want to keep adding down one grey. Okay, so with that base down, I'm just going to go straight in with some of the raw umber. I'm just going to use the side of the pencil and just shade this down. We're going to use a fairly heavy pressure, so you don't need to use like the pencil too lightly. We're just going to come off the ends here as well and just create this nice sort of soft edge to the main. I'm going to come all the way up to a little beard section. So when we do get next to this beard here, I'm just going to use the point of the pencil to bring some fur lines back into that just to break up the edge. and adding some more shading. All the way up to the bottom of this beard section. And again, just adding in some lines just coming into the beard and breaking up the edge. Coming into the right hand side a little bit here. Just breaking up the edge on the side here, coming right into the underneath of the beard now.
just continuing to shade and soften the edges. Just shading all the way down to the tape edge and again not using like too light pressure because this is all going to be really dark down here so we can use a fair amount of pressure to get a nice amount of pigment down Just filling in this last little section. Okay, so we've got a nice base of the raw umber down. Then what we're going to do is just go over with a little bit of the burnt ochre and some of the nougat and the walnut brown. So I'm just going to take some of the burnt ochre first. Let's blend some of that through this burnt umber, um, the raw umber. on the right hand side here it's just a little bit sort of richer in tone I'm going to use some of the nougat I'm just going to start to get darker, sort of have that almost grayscale effect. So just shading to begin with, just to really darken it. You can see just how nice and dark that gets there. Just with a little bit of shading. And then we're going to bring 
the lines from this dark area into the sort of beard to break it up using some of the walnut brown I'm going to give it a sharpen so I've got a nice sharp point to create some really precise lines with So getting really nice and dark as we go with this now. So just introducing all of the tones that we've used throughout the main. So the burnt sienna as I'm using just here. That's where we have slightly sort of more vibrant areas. We're just using the walnut brown and the nougat. You just darken, adding in some lines coming into the beard to break up the edge. So coming in really nice and dark right next to the beard so that it makes that sort of white fur really shine through and really pop. It's just getting really nice and dark underneath this chin. Putting in some burnt sienna. Some burnt ochre. the walnut brown again just to come into the beard section add in some fur lines just bringing them sort of all the way through as well so you get this really nice sort of shadow sort of almost like the underlying tone coming through the beard of this bit that we're adding here I'm going to use some more nougat just to add some shading first of all underneath the chin. Coming in with the walnut brown. I'm going to add some of the Caput Morton Violet. It's a really really nice warm brownie red. Which is perfect for underneath the chin here. I'm just going to come back to doing the right hand side here so we can get really nice and dark right next to the mouth and just using the walnut brown. It's pushing quite hard and just getting really nice and dark in here. And then just blending out, just lifting the pressure 
of the pencils who come towards the outside edge here. And just coming into the mouth and just adding a little bit more of a darker lip. Coming through the chin hair and just adding a few little different directions. I'm also going to use the dark indigo to come through there as well. So add in a few different fur directions there. Just coming back in with the walnut brown to the beard. really darkening up this right hand side going in with a bit of shading and then adding the separating lines going to use some of the Dark Naples Ochre, it's on the edges down the bottom here and I'm just going to bring the Dark Naples Ochre from the bit that we've already done on the right hand side here and just bring it into this part of the mane a little bit more. I'm going to switch out and use a little bit of the Nougat adding some of this down, just adding in fur lines, just coming down from this right hand section now and just bringing it and spreading it into the bottom of the mane down here. So you notice that I'm not going for too much sort of definition, sort of clumps of fur down here. That's because I don't want to take too much away from the focus on the chin because whereas the, the mane can get quite, can command quite a lot of attention, we want the main attention to be the face on this. I'm just using the nougat. I am just coming in and doing some ever such slight different directions of some of these fur clumps just off to the right hand side. Just some slight different directions, just little clumps here and there. I'm going to blend these in a little bit more. And we start to add some slightly darker tones and some more sort of warmer tones. We're just going to use the walnut brown to bring this darker shadow out a little bit more, just blend it through. So I'm going to use some shading just to be really nice and quick with this. So I'm just going in and just adding some really sort of darker areas just on the right here. Blending them out. So what we could do to really help to bring and blend this together and just sort of add the tones and blend it out nice and quickly is you could actually come in and use like a solvent blender or um, a blender pen or something like that just to be really nice and quick.
we're just going to come in here with the walnut brown just add in some darker sections just a little bit of more detail through here so I'm just coming in with the Caput Mortem Violet and I'm just shading it getting that really nice kind of rich red brown So I'm just coming into this beard section and just segmenting it a bit more, just really adding all of this dark colour around it. I'm just really coming into these little beard sections as well. It's really laying down the colour now, kind of burnishing almost as we're adding down some of this colour. Just coming in with a little bit more of the raw umber. Again, just kind of almost burnishing as we add this down. So just coming into that bit with a little bit of the dark indigo just on the right hand side here where it just needs to be a little bit darker and just shading some of that down there so we've just got this small section to complete here so to just finish this off I'm just going to go in with another layer of some raw umber some of the burnt sienna so where we define some of these other clumps is kind of just come out in a slightly different direction we're just going to just add some of the burnt sienna to those blend it into the surrounding area I'm going to take the walnut brown I'm just going to add in some fur lines coming off right at the right hand side here just bringing in from the side of the face just sort of bringing this kind of texture just bringing it down a little bit more I'm also just going to at the same time just work some of this walnut brown from the left from the center of the chin so add in a couple last little darker elements back into the main here and I'll add in some terracotta onto this side so 
So just adding some terracotta down here, shading that down. I'm going to give the walnut brown another quick sharpen. I'm just going to work in some really long strands of the walnut brown. I'm also just going to bring in some sky blue tones to this. I'm just coming off at some slightly more sort of choppy angles, just really overlapping, really sort of curving the fur strokes. I'm going to use some of the sky blue just to add a little bit of like a bit more of a grey toned shadow through here. It's just going to work with that orange, just going to desaturate in it's also gonna it's gonna act like a bit of a grayscale tone and I'm also just going to use a little bit of the dark indigo as well just in a few places just off the side here and then just gonna blend over some more raw umber come off the edges a little bit with some of the dark naples ochre let's bring a little bit of a highlight to some of these edges Using some of the dark chrome yellow as well. And then just bringing off some nougat tones to finish it off. And there we go. So that's pretty much it for the colouring. Um, all of the colours are in there, everything's working really well together. Just need to go through and maybe just add a little bit more sort of blending here and there, making sure all of these sort of clumps flow together. Just adjusting the side of the face a little bit up here. Might even just use a little bit of the terracotta just through the side of the face. Just a little bit there. Now, just going to go through and add some lines with the scalpel to the beard. So I'm just going to scrape away some really fine highlights of the beard. So just wiping the blade clean after a few strokes so we don't end up sort of reintroducing anything. And this is just going to create some really, really nice white lines over the top of this darker area, this really dark area, and this is where using a scalpel really shines. I'm just going to use Scalpel just to bring away that dark bit there. Just shade that back in. This bit here. It's a bit better there. 
just creating some longer flare strokes as it comes down through the beard as well. It's really kind of scraping away some of that darker area just there to help it blend in. Okay, I'm just going to go over that with some white. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's all we need to really do for this. You can just add in some longer little fur strokes on the chin if you wish. Just to vary up the sort of length and strength of the lines. But that is pretty much it for this lion piece. So hopefully you have enjoyed drawing this one. It's always one of my more sort of favourite things to draw and create is big cats and I always love working on them. This guy has been a little bit of a challenge and has taken me a little bit longer than usual but I have enjoyed working on him especially this last section of the main hair it's actually been really quite enjoyable to do that bit. So as I said you just want to go through maybe leave it a couple of days or whatever and just make any adjustments that you feel necessary to your piece so just darken any shadows add any sort of areas that you feel need a little bit of an extra push uh, anything like that just add and continue to tweak but if you feel like you are at a place that you're happy with your piece you don't necessarily have to tweak it at all so you can leave it as it is like this but as you can see, I just like to continually just blend and make sure that everything is really working together. Just blend over some of the orange tones into the darker areas and vice versa. Just so that everything's really nice and dispersed and blended. Like so. Okay. So as I said, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this one. And I will see you guys in another tutorial. Bye. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed following along this real-time tutorial with me. If you are interested in other real-time tutorials then make sure you check out my Patreon page or my website where you can see a whole list of tutorials that I offer. I have over 65 different subjects in real time over there as well as different techniques. I have a whole fur library and I am currently building a feather library as well. So we have fur, feathers, techniques and full subjects so everything you need to get started with coloured pencil. And if you're not a complete coloured pencil beginner then you can jump straight into the full projects like this lion. But I really hope that you have enjoyed following this one and I would absolutely absolutely love to see your final finished results so make sure you tag me over on Instagram it's at Amy Howard Art and make sure you join my Facebook group as well the link is in the description below you can post your in progress photos and your final pieces there and you can join the loving community of coloured pencil and art enthusiasts there as well if you haven't done so already and you like this video and you want to see more real-time content along with other coloured pencil content and arty content in general then make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you tick that bell notification as well so you never miss an upload of mine. I upload art videos every single Friday and I am uploading studio vlogs and other videos throughout the week now as well. But that is it from me and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!